Hi everyone, it's John Mitchell, and in today's video, we're going to look at our next motivation theory, which is Locke and Latham's goal setting theory. So Locke and Latham's theory, it's based on goal setting for employees. And throughout their research, what they found was, or what they looked at was how goal setting can influence or lead to motivation in individuals, along with the important factors that actually influence motivation when setting goals. And they, they ended up finding that there were five key factors that had a significant influence on motivation when you are setting goals. And those five factors or principles that they found were clarity, challenge, commitment, feedback, and task complexity. So what we're going to do in this video is go through each one of those five. So let's take a look. Now, Locke and Latham found that goals that were clear, specific, measurable, and really well-defined actually provided more motivation than vague or very general goals did. So part of the reason for that is because the employee becomes really clear on what they need to achieve, and they're also clear on what success actually looks like and how their performance is going to be judged. For example, goals like you need to take more initiative, they're far too general or vague and can actually provide confusion or a lack of direction for the employee. Instead, the goals need to be more specific things like you need to generate 15 more sales leads this month than what you did last month so that goal is specific it's got a clear time frame of when it needs to be achieved and it's also measurable and that provides the employee with the clarity of what the actual target or goal is and increases their motivation to work towards it the next factor is challenge and Locke and Latham found that there was a direct correlation between how challenging a goal is and the level of motivation it generated. So they found that challenging goals actually created more motivation than easy goals do. So if you think about yourself and about a goal that you could achieve with minimal effort, it's likely that it doesn't actually get you all that excited or motivated. Uh, however, if you have a challenging goal, as long as you have a level of expectancy that you can achieve that goal, it's likely to generate more motivation within you and, and give you, or you're likely to put your best effort towards its achievement. So the more challenging a goal was, as long as you ha it's not overwhelming and you don't think that you can achieve it, but the more challenging a goal is, the more motivation it creates. The next factor is commitment and Locke and Latham found that how committed an employee is towards a goal, the more motivated they will be to work towards its achievement. So this factor looks at the degree to which the employee is personally invested in working towards that goal. And the more invested, the more likely they are to increase their efforts towards its achievement. So in order to achieve a level of commitment, the manager can do a couple of things. One, they can set the goal and then try to convince or sell the idea to employees. They can do that by, for example, demonstrating the benefits of the goal and what it will do for the business and the employees to try and get them on board and really get them committed towards it. Or a really common method is to involve the employee in the setting of the goals by allowing the employees to actually have a say in what the goal is. And they're more likely to actually take ownership of the goal and therefore be more co committed towards its achievement, which can increase motivation. Now, Locke and Latham found that feedback was also an important factor, so regular constructive feedback, and they found that it provides the employee with information about how they're progressing towards the goal, and it can also help provide a sense of accomplishment of their progress towards their goal, so sort of celebrating steps along the way. And the manager may also provide feedback if the employee is getting off track, which can help the employee uh, navigate their way back on course working towards the goal. So they found him feedback to be a very important factor in maintaining the motivation over a long period of time towards the goal. And the final factor is task complexity. So we mentioned before that challenging goals provided more motivation than easy goals. However, every employee has their own skills and abilities. So complex tasks, they require more effort and planning. Uh, and But if the tasks involved in achieving the goal are too complex for the ability of the employee, well, motivation can actually be impacted negatively as the employee may feel that they're not able to achieve the goal. And therefore, they may not even put their best effort towards it at all. So the complexity of the goal and the skills of the employee need to be considered really carefully when setting the goal. So the goal should be extending the employee as we spoke about. It needs to be challenging, but it shouldn't be so complex that the employee simply doesn't actually have the skills or knowledge to achieve it. Now, it, it, you know, complex goals are still important. They don't want the goals to be too easy or just a really simple task for the employee. But to assist complex goals, the businesses may offer training and other supports to help assist the employee work towards that complex and challenging goal. 
Now, if we look at the advantages and disadvantages, one of the benefits of this theory is that if the employees are working towards these challenging goals, it helps the business improve motivation, but also helps them achieve their overall business objectives because the individual or the employee goal should be aligned with the business objectives. And as the employees are being extended with these challenging goals, their ability or their capacity is continuing to increase, which helps the level of work improve or the quality of the work improve over time, uh, which can really benefit the business and help create a competitive advantage. And there can also be improved relationships between the manager and the employees. They work together to set the goals as well as delivering feedback. However, on the flip side, setting these goals and offering feedback can be really time consuming for the manager and take them away from their normal duties. And it can also be difficult to find the balance between setting a challenging goal and a goal that's not overwhelming for the employee because every employee has different abilities and different self-confidence as well. So finding that balance between challenging the employees but not overwhelming them and setting these these tasks that are too complex for each individual, well, that can be a real challenge, uh, particularly if the manager is doing it for multiple employees. And finally, if the challenging goal is not achieved, well, then it can harm the confidence of the employee. So just to recap, Locke and Latham's theory outlines how employees can be motivated through the setting of goals and the important factors that they found that impacted motivation when setting goals are clarity, challenge, commitment, feedback, and task complexity. And that brings us to the end of this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we're going to look at our final motivation theory. But until then, just remember for questions, activities, and helping your VCE journey, then come on over to teachingbubble.com.